Hello and welcome to challenge number two on VEX VR. If you don't have access to this Google Doc which outlines the challenge which you're going to be completing, do drop me a message underneath this video. Now what we are going to be doing today is we're going to be using the Disk Transport Playground and in the last session what we did was identify the basic functionalities of VEX VR and we looked at how we can explore conditions and also loops. Now, in today's session, we're going to be focusing on these blocks here. So we're going to be looking at down eye, front eye, and also energized magnet. Now, if I go across to my VEX VR playground, you'll be able to see that I have some starting code in here. And I'm going to walk you through this in a moment. Um, we're going to build on the starting code. But to begin with, the idea of this VEX VR playground is you need to navigate the robot inside the, I would say, probably a castle walls. And you need to be able to get your robot to autonomously, that means by itself, using code, pick up the blue disc, take it back to the blue square, pick up the red disc, take it back to the red square, pick up the green disc, and take it back to the green square. Now, all of this has to be done completely autonomously using sensors, or as much as possible anyway. So I'm going to talk you through where I am at the moment. And if you complete a challenge number one, I mentioned to you at the end of the video, you're going to have to use this kind of print console uh, in today's video. And we want the robot to talk to us. So number one, let's check out this piece of code on the left. So we got the robot driving 100% velocity and turning 100% velocity just so it goes nice and quickly. And then we've got our first while loop here. And we're saying while the front eye of the robot is not near an object, meaning this castle, we want it to go forward. As soon as it is near this castle, we want to energize the magnet, which is on the bottom of this robot. We want to then drive reverse 150. And this is the red disc we're going for first. We're then going to get it to turn left 90. And then the robot's going to carry out this while loop here. And we're saying while the down eye is not detecting red, we go forward. So let's check out this first bit of code. So we're going to go forward, near an object, turn left, energize magnet, pick up disk, drive forward. So we've just completed everything here. So as soon as we have detected that red disk, it's going to return the disk. So what we're doing here is we're looking at how we can define our own functions inside VexVR. Now, before we talk about that, what do we mean by function and define function here? So, what we want to do is basically create our own, let's say, uh, code that can be used again and again. And we've created something which is called define and then or make a block and return disk so as soon as it finishes this while loop we're going to run this section of code here and what you'll be able to see at the moment is that we're using a forever loop so this is a third loop that you have been taught about we've used repeat we have used while and now this is forever and what this is going to do is it's going to run this code forever and ever based on these two if statements here. So think of an if statement like a question. So we're saying, if the position of the robot, and let me restart the program, let's check out the robot, the x position when it's here, so if the x position is less than zero, we can see that it's negative 410, we want the robot to drive in a reverse position. As soon as the robot position is greater than zero, we would like it to turn left. So let's see if that actually works. So we're going to go up to the castle, see an object, pick up the disk. And when the X location is greater than zero, you can see at the moment it's 30 because it's driving at 100% velocity. It's just turning left. And what we want to do here is we want to get the robot to go back to this red square. Now, as I mentioned to you, I want you to do this so the robot can complete this, let's say, autonomously or by itself. I don't necessarily think that drive forward for 900 is the best option here, but it is going to allow us to get the robot 
back to that red square, and we can then decide what the robot does next. So there we go, it's getting back to the red square. Now, as I mentioned, we need to get the robot to talk to you. And what we're going to do is every time it picks up a red disc, so we're going to go over here on the left to Lux, we're going to say print, vex code, and if we detect a, let's say, disk, we want the uh, robot to tell us what disk it has detected. So print, front eye detects red. Let's see if that works. So if it detects red, does it print this? Let's check it out. So hopefully we will get something being printed out here. And it's saying false, 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 false. Probably not what we want. So let's get rid of this block. We can add a nice simple print statement in here saying uh, detect red. That would be one option for us. And then if we want it to go to a new line, we would need to say set cursor to next ray. And this would allow the robot to start talking to us and telling us what it's seeing. Now, it's up to you how you use this. This is an example of how you get it to print. We can see lots of detect red here at the moment. We only really want that to happen once. But what we are going to do is we're going to move on to the next section of code here. So what happens when the robot gets back to this position? So we are going to create a new function and we're going to say let's get blue. So blue disk. So what we want to do is we want to autonomously collect a blue disk. Now, if you're running out of space in this window, you can simply drag your cursor across here and it will expand as much as you kind of need it to. So once it has driven forward to 900, we are going to get it to broadcast blue disk and hopefully it's going to switch over to this function. Now, for us to just see if that's going to work, we're just going to say turn right forever. We want to check to see if it's breaking this forever loop and moving across the blue disk. And if it is, we can then write the next part of the program. Okay, so we can see at the moment, it's gone in the wrong direction. Okay, so let's just test this one more time. And here we go. So collecting the red disk, going back home, forward 900, but now it's gone right because it's conducting this function next. Okay, so what we're going to say here is then I'm just going to put in a break and we are then going to move on to this next function. Break and then this. So let's just check this out one more time. Does it allow us to end this forever loop which repeats forever? And the answer is yes. It's now just turning right forever. So we can now decide what this robot is going to do next. We're going to say drivetrain, turn right for 180 degrees, and we want it to autonomously navigate its way to, let's say, this blue disk here. So we are going to duplicate some of our old code. We're going to go across here, and we're going to duplicate this while loop. We don't need this. And we're going to put it underneath our blue disk function. We're going to say while the front eye is not near an object, we want it to drive forward. We then want it to energize the magnet. And this time we need to decide how far it needs to reverse. It's not 100% autonomous. I'm going to say two squares, so 200, 400 plus 150. We can probably change this to be 550. And let's check out to see what our robot does now. So it's going to do red disk and hopefully then go to blue disk so it's going to turn 180 degrees but it never dropped the disk which is a little bit of a problem and it's also reversing too far so why did it not drop the disk so in order for the robot to drop the disk we need to say energize magnet to drop and then this is also reversing too far now if we look at the playground so I'd probably say you might want to change this reverse to b Let's try 400. And this is pretty much where this video is going to stop in a minute. So if we can identify the correct position, 
for it to pick up the blue disc, and if it can pick up the blue disc, this is where you will start building the rest of the program. So let's see. And we can see it's still a little bit too far. So we're going to say 380. And then, like last time, we're going to duplicate some of our old code. And we're going to say this time, while the robot cannot detect blue, okay, we are going to get it to drive forward. Okay, let's fix our print statement. And then detect blue. Probably in the wrong place, but that's fine. So, let's try one more time. And let's stop it, because this here is... 403,800, so this should be 380, and this should be near enough there. So let's check it out from the front view. Okay, so we've got our red disk, we are going back, and pretty sure we should get our blue disk now. It's crashing a little bit, okay, so this will need to be adjusted, and the robot has flipped. So, your task is to identify what this number should be, and then what should happen after this. In today's session, we have looked at how we can create our own functions, and you're going to need to create another function to decide what happens once this robot has picked up this blue disk here. Hopefully, all of the concepts from today's video of while loops, energized magnet, if statements, break and also creating functions is nice and clear drop me a message if you have any questions underneath this video or if you don't have access to the weekly challenges document